microscope. You can move this thing around wherever you want. You need to change your magnification up here, or just right click and change your objective. And then change the magnification. Okay? So when we come along and you get up in the cortex of the kidney, each one of these structures is a glomerulus, network of capillaries that can be part of the kidney. And so when we magnify this, here is this free space that we see, this layer, single layer of cells lining the glomerulus. This is your simple squamous epithelium. Okay, one single layer, flattened nuclei, simple squamous. And at the same time you're looking at that, you can actually look around and see some of these other tubules in the kidney. So this right next to it, it's going to be about the same width as it is height. This is going to be simple cuboidal epithelium. So if I go back uh, in the middle of the kidney, go back to like the medullary region, I can actually see some different areas down there. So you can see all kinds of different profiles. So when you see like this area right here, one layer of flattened nuclei, simple squamous. When you look at these cells right here, you can actually see individual cells. Here's one cell thick. So you got to kind of scan, scan around and find some that basically kind of fit the bill. But single layer of cells, some places it looks stratified in nature, but it's not. This is going to be a simple columnar epithelium. Okay, and as you scan around, go to different areas of this, you'll be able to find pieces that will be, you can find some simple cuboidal areas, you'll find some areas that will be a mixture of all the different types together. So you can envision how this would be simple cuboidal epithelium, here's a layer of simple squamous epithelium, and these would be, they're not very columnar in shape, but these are still a columnar, simple columnar epithelium. One cell layer thick, cells are taller than they are wide. So columnar, cuboidal, 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 squamous, squamous, squamous. Okay? See all kinds of free spaces. You know this has got to be made up of lots and lots of cut profiles through tubules that are epithelial line. Now, even in this, you'll see some structures like this that look fairly squamous. We wouldn't do this in this one, we'll get this later. These are actually some little rough blood cells in these structures. So if I tell you this must be a vascular structure of some sort, what must this epithelium be? That's an endothelium. There's an endothelium. But we'll give you better examples of that. So you see all kinds of different profiles when you do the kidney. Right. This slide right here is a cross section through, it tells you up here, artery, vein, nerve. So when you look through this, don't pull up this section right here. Here's a longitudinal section, and when you bring this portion up, you won't understand at all what it is. So look at the cross section through this structure. Okay? Then you go up in magnification. So here is the lumen of one blood vessel. Here's the lumen of another blood vessel. I'll go down lower magnification for you first. So here are two big blood vessels. Here's a big artery. Here's a big vein. You don't have to know what they are. But if we were on a practical and somebody pointed to this layer right here, said identify this tissue lining this vascular structure. You don't even have to look at the slide. What lines the vascular structure? Endothelium. Identify this tissue lining this vascular structure. Endothelium. Oh my goodness. You want endothelium on the practical, on a test. But as you look around, you'll find all kinds of different profiles of blood vessels in here. So even small ones like this, these are little arterioles lined with endothelium. So as you scan around, you'll find different places. It could be capillaries, venules, arterioles. But you're looking at all kinds of different profiles. A, Single layer of squamous shaped cells lining a vascular structure, endothelium. Okay, versus 
our other example of a simple squamous structure would be one that's lining the outside of an organ. And on some of these, you know, you got to scan around and find. Um, so if you want to find mesothelium, don't be looking in the inside lumen of the gland. You got to get on the outside of the gland. Okay? So if I get on the outside of the gland, magnify it up. And what happens is, oh, come back. Oh, come back again. Should be there, right? There it comes. Thank you. So when I magnify this up, and uh, when you scan around, you've got to kind of most of the the mesothelium will be stripped off. Here's a very small piece of it, though. When you look at this right here, I'm going to go up in magnification to 40x on this one. This area right here, the simple squamous epithelium lying outside of this organ would be an example of mesothelium. The unfortunate thing is on most of this gland, the mesothelium has been stripped off. So here's a piece of it here, but you keep scanning around, and you don't really see much of it on there. you got to just kind of look around, and here again you'll see, here's some more of it right here. You see this single layer of nuclei inside this organ. As you scan around, here's some more of it here, and then it kind of goes away. You'll see different pieces of it as you scan around. And most of the organs like the GI tract, if you pull up different parts of the intestine, so duodenum, ileum, jejunum, things of that nature, you'll be able to see some mesothelium on the outer surface of those glands. Simple squamous, on the outside of an organ, mesothelium. So simple cuboidal, I showed you a moment ago what some of it looks like relative to the kidney section. If you come in and look at this slide of the thyroid gland, and again, don't care that it's thyroid gland, this will be, though, the easiest thing in the world to identify when we get there. When you magnify each of these little structures up, what you'll notice is the epithelium lining these structures. Here's, you can see, each nucleus is in the cell unto itself. So here's one cell. Here's another cell, another cell. Lots of individual cells. This is one cell layer thick. The cells are the same height and width. Okay? So this would be an example of simple cuboidal epithelium. And when you scan around, it pretty much any time if you see cells where the nucleus is round and pretty much fills up the slide, it's going to be a simple cuboidal epithelium. Some of these as you scan around kind of a borderline between cuboidal and columnar. You can see how some of these cells start to get almost a little columnar in shape. They're starting to get maybe a little bit longer or taller than they are wide. But again, if we're on a practical, we're going to give you something that's very obvious that it's cuboidal, very cuboidal shaped cells, cuboidal shape, not something that's going to be columnar or close to columnar in shape. Okay? So when you scan around this slide, almost everything that you're seeing in here is a simple cuboidal epithelium, one single layer of cuboidal shaped cells. You're not worrying that this is the thyroid gland. You're just identifying this tissue. Identify the tissue at the pointer. Simple cuboidal epithelium. Okay, so Remember, when you're looking for these epithelia, don't, when you first pull up a slide and something like this pulls up, don't be looking in here for epithelium. You need to be looking for the lumens, the free surfaces. You'll see things like this at times, and these are really just artifacts. It's really this tissue's been shred apart or whatever, and there's really not an epithelium here, even though it looks like, oh, there's a free surface. There has to be. No, this has been artificially pulled apart. You're always looking for this like luminal surface. And remember, the cells are tight aggregates of cells bound together. And so when you scan around, you know, move to different places. Because when you look over here, 
or I saw a better spot maybe like this really it's like what in the heck is this over here that's a funky looking thing whereas when you come over and look at this part right here on this okay you can see individual cells it's not you know, here's one cell, two cell, three cell, four cell. These are all, it's a simple layer of cells. You can tell that their height is greater than their width. Okay? Here's the bound, here's where the epithelium ends. It's all one cell from here to here. This is another tissue underneath. We're going to come in next week and see how this is a connective tissue. All right? So you see the staining characteristics, how it's different for this cell type versus what's below. All the nuclei look different in here. Much more pink. We'll talk about why this is next week. So this is a simple columnar epithelium. And all this epithelium is the same all the way around this. Okay, even over here you see where, yeah, that looks pretty, pretty good as far as being simple columnar. But there's going to be places and profiles where it's like, boy, that looks stratified. Well, it's just the cut through the tissue. It makes it look funky. You'll see things like this, and dear God, what is that? Okay, scan around, find places that make sense. On a practical, we're not going to give you things like this. We'll give you this. Simple columnar epithelium. We're not going to give you something that looks stratified. We're going to give you a beautiful example of simple columnar, if that's what we want. Okay? You just need to scan around and look at multiple slides so you get a good feel for what these things look like. So here again, here's the lumen of an organ. And this is pretty similar to most of the slides I was using for simple columnar in the lecture. If you scan around and look at these different areas of these different finger-like extensions up, if you come in and magnify it up, you'll be able to see that it's a simple tissue. Here's where the epithelium goes from here to here. This stuff in here is not part of this tissue. This is an epithelium. This stuff in here is a connective tissue we'll learn about next week. This is a simple columnar epithelium. The cells are longer than they are wide. The nuclei tell you a lot about it. You got all these nuclei packed together, but look at where the cytoplasm is. Very long cell with not much width to it. And then when you look at that outer surface, Here's what we we're looking at in the lecture. All this stuff right here would be what? There's your microvilli on the border of these cells. Okay? And then I'll come back in a moment and talk about this little guy, this unicellular gland called a goblet cell. Nice goblet features. I have a question. Yes. question is, would I have you ma um, do the microvilli at this magnification? My answer to you is, why not? And first off, I can't go any higher magnification. 40x is all I can get. Okay? Would I maybe give you a better example? The answer is definitely yes. But what else would be this fuzzy stuff on the border of these cells that has this bright dark band below it? There's your terminal bar. That's part of where these guys insert into. So here's my microvilli on the surface of these cells. And actually, if you go around and look, we're not going to discuss this yet, but if you look, here's this goblet cell, a mucus secreting cell. And look, you have no microvilli on its surface. Why don't you have microvilli on the surface of this cell? Because it's not a cell involved with absorption. The purpose of this cell is to secrete mucus. So it doesn't need microvilli on its surface. These cells are all absorptive cells, hence they'll have microvilli on their surface. It's all about the functionality of the cells. Okay. This slide should become one of the easiest ones to identify, because when we come into the lumen, and you see this very prominent basement membrane, and you can see individual hair-like structures. You know these are cilia, and really the only place you see cilia for your purposes is part of the pseudostratified, ciliated columnar epithelium. 
All right, so we look at the lower mag, 